Did Disney make a bad decision? Hey, what's going on everybody? Rick here at Disney's Magic Kingdom to give you some park updates. First update, it's August and the Magic Kingdom is decorated for fall. And also, Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. But please note, all of the August dates for Mickey's Not So Scary have been sold out. As you walk into the Magic Kingdom, they have all these awesome posters of all the attractions and stuff. I think the People Mover poster has been updated. And maybe the Tron poster too, though I'm less sure about this one. All of Main Street USA decorated for the season. All of the familiar scarecrows are back. Trying my best to show you all the awesome decorations and fall decor. I just, I don't think the camera's gonna do it justice. Driving in was a breeze. Parking was a breeze. Getting into the theme park a breeze. Walking down Main Street. Challenging with everyone stopping to take photos. So I'm gonna walk around the park discovering updates but there is something we need to discuss. The latest Disney controversy. We will talk about it when we get to the spot of the controversy. But we'll start as I often do in Tomorrowland. By the way, there are some Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party snacks and treats available to daytime guests. I'm gonna try one today too. I do recommend the breakfast bowl over the sticky bubble bread but unfortunately the bowl costs almost twice as much this is available at the launching pad the park has been officially open for 30 minutes an hour for certain hotel guests and space mountain is a 45 minute wait there is no standby line for tron you still have to try to get a virtual queue or purchase a lightning lane. One day it will get a standby line. When that happens, I'll let you know. Pretty light traffic on the Tomorrowland Speedway at the moment. Kind of like my drive in here today. Some of the seasonal Mickey ear headbands are available. I believe these go for around $35. A pretty mild wait time for the Speedway at just 20 minutes, but what we really want to know is what's the wait time for the mine train? Let's go find out. Along the way, what do we have here? A meet and greet photo opportunity with Alice and the Mad Hatter. 9.45 in the morning. The mine train is a 60 minute wait, one hour. Fun fact, right now Hagrid's over at Universal, also a one hour wait. It's not even 10 o'clock yet. It is so hot. I have to remember to stay hydrated. I wish some type of water company would reach out to me for some sponsorships. I mean, no, no better place than to sponsor water than in Central Florida. I'm on the other side of the Seven Dwarfs Mine train now, and I'm trying to remember, but it's hard. It's been like 30 years since they've had 20,000 leagues under the sea here. I want, wasn't it like back in like this area i can't remember if anyone knows share that information with me in the comment section it's been so long and this is kind of pertinent to what we're going to talk about in just a minute which is changes at the magic kingdom which are coming again holy smokes no need to pay for premium stroller parking today kind of empty here at the carousel get to the theme park early look at this I'm about to walk by Peter Pan's flight and Small World, plenty of elbow room. Maybe because Peter Pan's flight is closed for a little refresh. I know we hardly ever think of this as being true, but there is more than one castle at the Magic Kingdom. That one belongs to the Beast and Belle. And over here at Under the Sea, isn't this a castle as well? Not the most grandest castle, but I think that's a castle. They are just not taller than Cinderella Castle. Inside of Memento, which is the, the de facto Haunted Mansion gift shop, we have for $30, these are little ravens 
that will sit on your shoulder. And for $40, Disney Tails. You know what these are? It'll help if I show you the mannequin. Oh, it's for your pup. There's that one. And that one. If your pup will allow it to stay on, purchase it for $40. For $25. It's a pet toy. It's a doom buggy. Oh, they are taking care of your pets here. I recently did a reaction video to some of the Disney news that came out of D23. And one thing that came out was this, uh, the building of a villain's land. And we sort of had a conversation, is that something Disney would want in his happy place? And then someone in the comment section brought up, well, Rick, there's already the Haunted Mansion there. And to that person, I concede. I concede your point. Well taken, well done, well played, my friend. It was a good and valid point. And speaking of the Haunted Mansion, it's basically a walk-on. They have it listed as a 13-minute wait. <laughs> It's been a while since I've eaten at the Harbor House. It had construction walls up for the longest. I think maybe they revised their menu a bit. Here's what the sign outside says. There's like a shrimp salad, some fish and chips, some more shrimp. That's probably what a, uh, a lobster roll. That, that kind of looks like a po' boy. And then the salmon. Now that's what I always got, so. But I like, you know, I, this seems like stuff I would eat. And I haven't eaten it. Well, except for that. So it must be revised. Oh boy, here we go. There's the Liberty Bell paddle boat and Rivers of America. The internet is already on fire. I hope my conversation doesn't add more fuel. Remember at the beginning of the video when I asked, did Disney make a bad decision? Well, it's regarding Rivers of America and the Liberty Bell there. After D23, everyone was excited because Disney announced expansion to Magic Kingdom. You know, a villain land to come, uh, a couple of Cars attractions and you know, other stuff. But what they didn't do was say it was a demolition and expansion. Because they planned to demolish Tom Sawyer's Island and Rivers of America to make way for cars, that cars land, or the cars attraction, I should say. <sighs> I think it's a bad decision. Now, when it comes to Tom Sawyer's Island, I really don't care about it. I really don't care about it. I've been there once or twice in the past decade. Uh, but the Liberty Bell, I do enjoy from time to time. I find it a, a, a bit of a break, a bit of a respite from the madness of the park, the craziness and the crowds of the park, just to take a lap around the river, you know, it's relaxing and watch the paddle go round and round. Uh, a bit of a breeze, you know, when you're moving on the water there. And not just for, you know, it's not like a must do, like I have to ride it, but I do enjoy it for the look. It is a majestic view here at Magic Kingdom and one thing like Disneyland fans, the, you know, the California park, those fans tend to rag on Disney World is that, oh, Disneyland is so charming. Magic Kingdom's not charming. I would argue that Rivers of America, and especially seeing the Liberty Bell move through it, was one of the most charming aspects of the Magic Kingdom. Now, Sometimes I would kind of argue in my head whether or not, oh, Disneyland is charming and Magic Kingdom is not charming. But with the Liberty Bell going away, then their argument of Disneyland being charming and Magic Kingdom not being charming, well, that's going to hold more weight. Personally, and you can disagree, this is just opinions, there's no right answer or wrong answer. Let's just be nice about it. In my opinion, it's a mistake to demo this. I mean, there's, there's plenty of land at the Magic Kingdom. It's not like Universal Studios Florida, which doesn't have a lot of room to grow and expand. Plenty, plenty of room around here. And even if I don't ride the Liberty Bell every time I'm here, I enjoy it 
at least a view of it every time I'm here. I focus on it a lot when I'm doing the live streams. And you know what else I don't ride every time I'm here? Cinderella Castle. I know it's not a ride, but it's the same principle. You don't ride it, so if people don't ride the Liberty Bell, at least they can enjoy the view of it like they do the castle. So, you may disagree or agree, but I think it's a mistake to demo that whole area. You know, like I said, I don't really care about Tom Sawyer's Island, but the Rivers of America and the paddle boat, <sighs> oh well. I mean, that's part of change. I mean, I kind of enjoyed bring, going back to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I always enjoyed the look of that as well, even if I did not go on it every time. So, uh, it's just something, we'll see how it looks when it's done. I mean, another example would be like, and I'm still a little upset with Jaws being demoed at Universal and being replaced by Harry Potter. The thing is, Jaws was replaced by an awesome, awesome area, an awesome IP, Harry Potter, whereas Cars, I don't know, I enjoyed the first movie. Second one, I don't think I liked it all. Third one, maybe I liked it a little bit. So, being demoed for kind of a mid IP, uh, but in the end, we'll just have to wait and see how it is, how we enjoy it, and 30 years from now, <laughs> like it's 30 years from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, would we even remember it was here? It's not open yet, or I would go on it. And for those who want to mock the word ambiance, it's a word for a reason, and it has a meaning, and the Liberty Bell represents ambiance. See those construction walls right there? Another thing removed from Frontierland, the shooting range, forever gone now. You know what should be here for a while though? The Country Bear Musical Jamboree. They just revamped it, so it's not going anywhere soon. Across from Pecos Bill is the Westward Ho Refreshments. It's 11.30, I can still grab a little breakfast sandwich. This is the crispy chicken, egg, and cheddar cheese biscuit. If you want to change up the cheese, you can get pepper jack. done with my little breakfast sandwich from Westward Ho. What did I think of it? It was just, uh, it was just okay. It was something to uh, stop me from being hungry. The chicken was mid-level, the cheese mid-level, the biscuit mid, everything about that was mid. Uh, it, it did its job. You're a little hungry, you can get a little something to eat. For under eight dollars, I might add, that was the big selling point. Get something for under eight bucks to kind of fill you up until your next real meal. So, can I recommend it as some food you will enjoy eating? No, no I cannot. Can I recommend it as some food to keep you from starving for under eight dollars? Yes, yes I can. Praise be, TBA is running today with guests on it. TBA stands for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And it has been having some operational difficulties though. TBA, just like Tron, is lightning lane and virtual queue only. No standby. Critter Co-op is a merchandising store. It should have been a walk-up counter service food joint in my opinion. It only needed to offer three things. Gumbo, po' boys, and beignets. It's probably more profitable selling merchandise though. It's this little western outpost here in Frontierland that is offering Tiana's famous beignets. It's just, I'm not saying the wheels have come off at Disney, but uh, things are a little wobbly. A little wobbly in my opinion. That is just not the first in class detail that we're used to with Disney. If it's been a while since you've been to Disney World, you may remember Tortuga Tavern as a food place. No longer. It is Tortuga Treasures that sells merchandise inside. But I think that is temporary as the gift shop to Pirates of the Caribbean is closed. I think eventually Tortuga will be switched over into a pirate themed restaurant. And by the way, Pirates of the Caribbean, a 35 minute wait. 
it's a little later in the day so the the strollers are starting to take over I think Aloha Isle has a seasonal Dole Whip to go with Mickey's Not So Scary. Happy Halloween! This is the Dole Whip Mango and Chamoy Float. Dole Whip Mango, Pineapple Juice, Chamoy, and Chili Lime Seasoning, $7.29. It was delicious. Some bites, obviously, a little bit of a kick to it. Look at this. I was just talking about 20,000 leagues under the sea. And there's a Mickey's Not So Scary prop for it. A little photo opportunity for it. Obviously, we did not enter Adventureland this way. We entered from Frontierland. But I just have to show this here. This is one of the best entrances to a land that I can think of. Love it. So classic. So vintage. Like a paddle boat. It's worth noting that while there is scrim and construction walls around the Plaza restaurant, it is open for business. Over here by Tomorrowland Terrace, another Halloween photo box. This one is Sleepy Hollow. All right, share your thoughts nicely in the comment box. And as always, don't miss the magic, don't miss the fun. Click that subscribe button. It's gonna be a good day, good day, I'm making Nikki show the way. It's gonna be a good day.